Hey guys, and welcome to part two in this BMW motorcycle build. In part one, we took a trip down memory lane to see where it all began for this bike. Then I touched on the fuel tank design process and we made a start on a number of the jobs required to transform my R9T Scrambler into a customised machine that I'll be taking to the Australian launch of the R12 GS in Queensland. Here in part two, I'll be focusing my time and energy into the fuel tank. To get started, I need to cut the tunnel out of the donor tank that I bought. And this tank is brand new, but I've done this in the past to secondhand tanks and you've got to make sure all those flammable fuel vapors are gone and typically I just empty the tank and leave the cap off for a few days. If you don't have that sort of time then flush it out with water and remember to always leave the cap off when cutting into it. With the tunnel cut out and the edges deburred I could slip this over the frame of my R9T. The new R12 actually has an updated frame design with a few different tank styles to choose from so I'm excited to see this at the launch later this month. I've water jet the tank sides out of 3mm aluminium. This is a process of taking my CAD design, extruding it, creating a DXF file, then loading this into the water jet, which is a quick and easy process. I've folded the rear edges in a little to maximise the frame's ability to hold fuel. CAD is super handy here as it allows you to quickly and simply modify shapes like this. Now I'll set up the TIG on AC and weld in a spreader to create the gap between the tank sides. I'm actually really impressed how this is all working out. The outer tank is a perfect fit over the new inner tank sides. Adding EFI into a fuel tank isn't easy and I've learnt my lessons before and now make the fuel pump mounting ring out of thicker material in a hope that it won't warp and buckle when welding. Now that the ring has been spun up in the lathe, drilled and tapped, I can make sure the whole EFI system can fit in place. I've made sure that the pickup is on the base of the tank to maximise fuel pickup and the fuel level warning sensor sits about 2 litres from the bottom of the tank. I'm using 2mm aluminium sheet to fold up the complex outer perimeter of the tank. Going 1mm thinner here allows me to hand fold most of the bends while still being thick enough to weld onto the 3mm side plate. Bends in close succession are not easily completed on anything other than a press brake folder and because I only have a pan folder I resort to using my homemade workbench and 90 degree supports and you can find the DXF files for this bench over on my website. So now that I've got my fuel tank fitting really nicely in the chassis of this BMW, I'm ready to completely weld it up. Um, I won't go into too much detail on the TIG welding process, um, but if you did want to learn more, then I've got a whole host of uh, courses on engineertoslide.com. 
and uh, and here you can learn pretty much all there is to know about TIG welding and fabrication. Um, but one of the biggest key factors in preparing aluminium for welding is removing the oxide layer and this is just a process of using scotch brite or sandpaper to uh, rub back the areas that you're welding, making sure that they're clean and clear and, uh, and then some uh, isopropyl alcohol or even acetone just to remove any impurities around those uh, areas. This is 5000 series aluminium with 3mm thick sides and then the wrap around the top is 2mm in thickness. I like to concentrate a lot of the heat into the 3mm sides and, uh, and then get a nice even distribution of heat through the part and, uh, and then use the foot pedal to modulate the amount of amperage that I have. Um, it does help in aluminium welding to have a little bit of pulse and you can play around with these settings to get the best um, results for your application. To mount this tank I'm using the factory provisions and these are isolated from the chassis. It's important that all motorcycle fuel tanks are isolated from vibrations and high frequencies as over time these can create cracks and leaks will appear. With the tank completely welded, I could uh, start to figure out the filler. Um, obviously, you need to fill the fuel tank with fuel, and so I purchased a two inch aluminium weld on filler neck, and then cut it down to the surface of the tank cover, and then lined it up and made sure that it was all ready to go. One thing I did do was I just swaged out the bottom surface of the, the filler, and what this means is that when you take the cap off and you look inside, there's no uh, 90 degree surface that could have some little weld dags on the inside. Um, so this just makes the welding process a lot neater and, uh, and sort of swaging out that filler always helps um, when welding. With the filler on, essentially the fuel tank was finished and I just needed to make sure that it's sealed. What I did, and I didn't film this, sorry, was uh, put some soapy water around all of the weld edges and then put some compressed air into the filler of the tank and just made up a little bung so I could pressurize it. Now you don't want too much pressure here, um, you just want enough to see the air coming out of any little welds. Um, surprisingly, no leaks on this tank, which I was really happy about. It meant that I could just give it a wipe down and then fill it with fuel and put it back on the bike. Um, I connected up the fuel lines and primed the fuel pump and just made sure that the fuel pump and everything still worked as it did on the original tank, which it did. So with all of that done, I can move on to the second large item which I had on my list. Uh, the first was a fuel tank, the second is the exhaust. So I'll be taking that original header, I'll be cutting off some of the items that I need to uh, add on to the new header and I'll be cutting up my stainless steel and starting to make a new header system for this BMW. Stay tuned for part three in this build series.